So welcome to this week's episode of Leadership Soundbites with Roko and Michelle and our very special guest, Brian Stortz. I am so excited to be in the room with you again. Um, I was excited to be in a room with you before in person, at least virtual is nice. Brian is a director of organizational effectiveness and change management at Sutter Health. We met at Sutter Health. We worked together at Sutter Health. Um, and I have missed working with you at Sutter Health. Um, so Brian has been nice enough to join us for the series that we're on now, which is Lessons in Leadership. Um, he's got, you you have a wonderful career that's led you up to this point, And I freaking love your attitude about things. So that what we're going to kick off with this quote is Brian's quote. And it's just around just be nimble. And so there were, <laughs> my head is like, just be nimble, just be quick. Da, 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 da. I jumped over the candlestick. That's that's where my brain went. <laughs> this stuff. Um, so I'll back. I'll back up a minute. Um, when I think about this, and I think about Brian, the conversations you and I have had, the journey that that not only Sutter Health has gone through with changes, but freaking, I think every organization has gone through rapid fire org changes to adjust to COVID, the way people work differently. And when I think about just being nimble, there's such a strong mindset around the ability to accomplish that, that I'm, I sit as a bobblehead going, yes, I agree with you. Um, because I think that's the thing to where we're not going to break with the changes that are happening if we are nimble with what's happening. Um, and so thank you for this time and welcome to the conversation, Brian Storz. And what's on your mind? Oh, thank you for having me. As we were talking about that, you know, we never know exactly what's going to come in front of us. So, so often we don't think about, okay, how am I going to walk today? Uh, which foot am I putting in front of the other? So some of it is just every moment we've had prepares us for the next one. And so we know how to walk. And sometimes we're driving and we, we don't know how we got somewhere because our muscle memory is taking us there. But then if we see something come in front of us in traffic, a car is slowing down, we know how to react to it. And so a lot of being nimble is exactly that. You're constantly building your muscle for it, but in those moments, you just know how to respond and take whatever's in front of you and then move with it. So that's one of the things that comes to mind for me. Love I love it. So I, 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 gonna, I know you're gonna say something, so I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna allow you to Thank you, for oh, <laughs> Thank you. So Brian, part of our, our podcast is we're, you know, this is for leaders who are starting out or who have been in it a while and are trying to develop themselves. Um, being nimble isn't something I think that um, is natural to some folks. So can you tell us a little bit about your journey in becoming nimble or have you just always been nimble? Oh, no, <laughs> most definitely not. <laughs> So I've, I've told the story a few times and, and my gosh, now at least three people are, are going to listen to this from me <laughs> as I say this one. But uh, for example, I, I have never done training before and I attend this, attended this training a long time ago and I, I'm going to try to be quick as I describe this. So I was an operations manager at Discover Card and one of my employees invited me to the seminar um, time and productivity management. And so when you think about me saying that, you can probably date this back to the 1920s when I actually attended that seminar. And she said, oh, just show up. I know somebody who's delivering and they'll love to have you attend. So you can go for free. So I went, I went to this free seminar at a hotel. And at the end, they asked for an evaluation. And Kitty, um, Catherine Kitty uh, said, and they really want your feedback. So can you fill out the evaluation and tell them what you liked and what you didn't like? So of course I filled out three pages of the evaluation and critiqued all kinds of things. And then next thing I know, she comes back the next day at work and says, they want to meet you for a breakfast meeting. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> they read my evaluation. And I, uh, long story short, I found out, she didn't want me to know at the time, but it was her husband and he was the head of a, a small consulting firm that did uh, seminars for small businesses on time and productivity management and organizational leadership and so forth. And I critiqued them so much that the, the short story was at the end of that meeting, that breakfast meeting, they offered me the job to become their seminar director. So I became the director of seminars. I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I sign up for? And I did this concurrent to working at Discover Card. 
And my first assignment was to do a seminar in front of 300 people. And a couple of months later, we delivered that seminar and it was just wonderful because uh, there was this, there's this quote in the industry, De Niro is one of the ones who's always talked about this. It's hark, I hear the cannon roar. So this actor is getting, going to get up on stage and has a simple part, hark, I hear the cannon roar, hark, I hear the cannon roar. And then you exit stage left. And so he practiced, he got up on stage and when his time came, boom, this loud cannon goes off and he goes, what was that? jumps and, and then storms off stage right. And so that's how he did his part. And so I had that heart, I hear the cannon roar moment where I got up on that stage and I fell flat on my face. And not really good when you have your new boss uh, take over your seminar for you halfway through, but that was a lesson learned for me. And so I tackled a few things, stage fright and failing, fail fast <laughs> so that you can move on from there. And so the next one I did a couple of weeks later, I made it my business to uh, just create a powerful experience for, for everybody else. And it's not that you have to fail, but sometimes it's how do you be nimble coming out of that. So I have typically since then gone after whatever I don't know how to do. It's like, all right, I'm going to try this out. Let's see how it goes. But the more I've done that, the more it's allowed me to just kind of move all over the place in my career and my career arc has not been this nice neat curve or this upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. Then I go southeast, northwest, east. And, I, and that's been my career arc and it's been a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. I love interesting. That. Oh yeah. Interesting when you talk about because it, it's so funny is that you know I wrote down fail faster and I also wrote down set the intention for yourself, right? Because one of Roko's favorite things is intentionality. But the intention, the intention I heard is you said, if I don't know how to do this, that's where I'm going. That's the thing I'm going to learn how to do. I'm going to, I'm going to conquer this. I'm going to get over this. I'm going to add, basically add this to my repertoire of skills. Um, I had uh, a conversation with Tansy Bucor and, and she's basically the obstacle is the way, you know? And so if, if that's, if you can't go that way, there's some barrier and skill is going to be a barrier, then that's where we have to go. Um, and so I think what, it, what does it do for you? I mean, I, I think about me, what it does is I, as you went through, I think about my career and the stuff that I stepped into that I literally had no experience. Um, Roko, you were there when I stepped into manager of education and standards. I'm like, great. I got the job. I do not know how to do this job. <laughs> Never done this job. Don't even know where to go. Have deliverable to Linda Catch Dorian, um, you know, within a week. And so I, I think about the resources that I tap into when I when I step boldly go where no man has gone before. And then who do you tag and step in? What is what is going on in your head when you step into things that literally you haven't done before? Probably the first thing is have a curiosity. So I haven't always had that curiosity, but that's you know, that's a lesson I've learned is go in with the curiosity. And that is so powerful. Something else I've been learning, especially in my time at Sutter Health over the last seven years is to be inquisitive. So that goes with curiosity. Be inquisitive, be willing to ask the questions. And I haven't always done that, but I've been doing it a lot more. And it's amazing how you can mask what you don't know when you're in a conversation just by asking that question. <laughs> and, then, and then you get to move forward and you get someone else talking and they think you're so smart. Um, but it, seriously, I also learned that way. So I've learned more and more uh, every year and every day. I learn more to be inquisitive, to ask the question, to listen. And if you don't ask the question, you can get yourself in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, if you do ask the question, uh, it can take you somewhere where you didn't expect to go. So that's one thing that comes to mind. I love it. Roka. It, it, it's scary asking questions for the first time. I think mean, like when you when you first said nimble, I'm going to date myself, but I said, it reminds me of Gumby when we were offline talking yeah. uh, because back in my manufacturing days and introducing that concept of being nimble, that, that was the symbol that they put up on the, you know, the picture of, of Gumby, but it can be scary stepping into those things. So what are some of the things that you've done to to relinquish that fear and be able to move forward? And, and in this moment, like you said, be able to ask those questions. You're a senior leader of an organization. 
Um, and even if you are just starting out to be able to sit in a room and be able to ask questions that that might lead people to say, hmm, does he not know something or, you know, so talk to us about that. Usually pretty early on, you start to learn where to go, who, who is your next person you need to talk to. As an external consultant that I've also been a couple of times, sometimes I've gone into a new organization on a big assignment and someone walks you in the door, hands you your badge and says, go find this person and get started. And that's your that's your onboarding or your orientation. And then you just have to run with it from there. So you go and find that person. And then that person leads you to the next person. So sometimes you're in a big room and uh, if you're put on the spot, then you have to go with what you had coming into the room. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I also try to do is follow one of my favorite authors, Buckingham. I've, I've always loved Buckingham when he was with Gallup and then since then and the books he wrote a number of years ago about focusing on your strengths. So what are the strengths that got me here? And my strengths are different from yours. Mm -hmm. So um, so just embracing the strengths that I can bring into a situation and celebrating that other people also have different strengths and I want to learn about them. So if I'm thrown into a situation with nothing else to go on, I'll try to pull from my strengths in the moment and think fast on my feet. But if I have a, the luxury of a little more time, then I, I take that curiosity into a conversation that points me to the next person and the next person. And I can learn from them. And, and also, I was on a call earlier today where I said, I don't know what I don't know to ask what I don't know to ask. So it's not even, I don't know what I don't know, but I sometimes don't know to ask what I don't know to ask. And I and I told the expert, and I, I really appreciate your expertise. So if you have any guidance for me, I'm very coachable uh, to, uh, to maybe have you take this conversation where you want it to go. So that was just this morning that I did on a call. So yeah. one of the other attributes that, co that comes into play for me is to have humility. Uh, be and, humble, be humble and to be vulnerable to yeah. have that conversation. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Uh, when you when you call out the it, it's there's nuanced differences, right, Brian? Between I don't know what I don't know, but the the rest of the story of that is if if you believe, okay, because you don't know, but if you believe that you're like your new adventure, you're trying something and you believe that you don't have questions, right? You believe that you actually understand what's expected of you, even though it may be misguided. You may not, you may not ask questions because you're assuming I got this. And, and if you can piece enough stuff together that you're going, yeah, I, I think I'm good. And literally people have gotten in trouble for stuff that they're like, why didn't you ask? And you're like, I didn't know I had a question. <laughs> I literally didn't know. Yeah. But I think that's a powerful call out. There are meetings that toward the end of the meeting, I'll end it with something along the lines of what should we have talked about that we haven't talked about yet? Mm -hmm. And it's along those same lines. Invite other people in, invite other perspectives in so that people can fill in that stuff that you don't know. Yeah, so true. And I love that question too. I, I often try to use it at the end of a, a conversation. What else haven't we gotten to that we need to talk about? Yeah. What else is on your mind where we can walk away from this conversation? You'll be more comfortable than before you came in. And I also ended a meeting just an hour ago on that one with another. Yeah. Um, so those are a couple of things that come to mind. Yeah. There was something else that you said a, a moment ago, and I can't remember the context, but also um, when I was talking about humility, it's also and vulnerability. It's also being willing to constantly look at your lessons, your lessons mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. And when oh, now I remember when you're talking about, you might go ahead and design something and say, "I got this," and you design the whole thing and you go down one path, but it may not have been the best path. I've done that before. I'm willing to talk about my fail fests. Where have mm -hmm. I where have I not succeeded? So <laughs> I don't do that again. So yeah. one of the things I've also learned is to embrace um, those things that have not gone as well as they could. And then what do you do with them? I was in an organization where I built this amazing thing. 
I'm not going to mention which company. It's not my current one. A thing. You built an amazing thing. <laughs> uh, it was so it was a seven phase change methodology that I that I co-built with three other people, three wonderful people in my in my professional careers. And they were the brains behind the organization. I just kind of tagged along. And we built this amazing change methodology. But when I brought it into certain situations, it was like, that's great. All right, anyway, we'll talk to you later. And so, and so being di- when you get dismissed from a conversation, you think, all right, well, I, here I came with my nice little pitch and my thing. But if I just asked the questions, I could have gotten to, what do you want? And let's, mm-hmm. let's get there. So mm-hmm. it's asking the questions to get to what they want. Yeah. That's powerful stuff. Roko. Well, I was just, I was going to take us to a place where we uh, were talking offline and we were talking about change and being nimble with change. And you had mentioned that there was this, this model that you had um, shared with us. I don't want to say what it is because I want you to say it. So tell us a little bit about this model that you talked about, about being nimble and this whole idea of um, managing through change. Thank you, Rocco. So early in my career, I was an operations manager in a in a large organization, and we had a general manager who was one of maybe ten people who have really impressed me in my career as leaders, where I've learned from them, and they've been my role model, whether they, whether they know it or not. And he was super energetic, and um, and so what he did fits uh, fits his personality. So. Um, to, to be energetic and to be able to move forward. We we're a new operations center in a very growing large company in the financial services industry. And he came out with this little thing. Um, I'm not gonna name the year because now you're gonna take me back to the 1890s if I tell you <laughs> what it was. But uh, he came up with this thing and he gave every employee in the organization, everybody in that operations center, I should say, this little frame print that we could either put on a little easel on our desks or hang uh, hanging up somewhere, and it was a cheetah in full stride with its front and rear legs fully horizontal at, uh, at its fastest speed. And it, it had the company name and it had the tagline underneath it, fast, fit, and flexible. And that's always stuck with me. And I've been thinking about it again lately, how here we are so many years later, and it's something relevant today in the speed of today, the speed of now. And so that fast, fit, and flexible is a way that uh, we can operate as a person, as a leader, as a team, as an organization, and in the moment uh, response to where the cheetah um, can, it is not needing to go many miles, but it needs to be able to get to its speed fast. It needs mm-hmm. to be able to do so, and it needs to be able to be flexible to turn on a dime to either avoid something that could endanger it or to get something that is part of its survival. And so um, that fast fit and flexible is a good way to have an orientation in this age where our day can turn on a dime. We, we came in at 10 o'clock or, at, well, some of us came in at five this morning, but we came in at five and by 7 a.m., everything has changed. There's been a, a big swing in sentiment or in priority or whatever it is. So do we have those attributes of being fast fit and flexible to go in that direction that we need to and to thrive. Yeah, I, you know, I just, I loved it so much when you said it and I, that's, I wanted to take us there because it reminded me so much of COVID, you know, during COVID. Yeah, yeah organizations that's what I was thinking of. had to move quick. They had to be able to get from point A to point B quickly to serve their patients, to serve their um, employees. But the fit piece of it was, we had to make sure people were mentally and physically ready, whether they had the tools, whether they had the mental capacity to manage that pace of change that was coming at us. And then to your point about being flexible, I remember one day it was like, we came in at seven o'clock in the morning and there was a, a, you know, a new protocol for how you did something. And by 10 o'clock that AM, it was changing because we had learned something new. And so mm-hmm. being flexible to say, okay, I've got to let go of that thing that I saw at 7 a.m. And now I've got to start um, operating uh, under this new policy. So 
I, I, and it just fits again. Like you think of all the disruptions that are out there now, because we've learned how to live through a pandemic and building that mental capacity and skill set to be fast fit and, and flexible. And as you said, I'll... something else comes to mind too for me, which is yeah. muscle memory. So what's the muscle memory we can build and retain going forward? Most of us have had those moments. A lot of us had those moments in 2020, but it's not, necess it's not necessarily the only point in time for us. So right. when we have those moments where we've had to pivot, what got us through it? How, mm -hmm. how, what were the attributes that we took into it and out of it where we were successful? And how do we retain that muscle memory for the next time we also need to do that? Well, yeah, and, and, and this, oh, sorry, oh, go oh, ahead, Michelle. No, you, no, you're fine. Go uh, ahead. I was just going to say, and it, it's not just in, in moments of crisis, like like the pandemic right it it can happen every day we we it I, what i love about that fast piece of it is it changes our perspectives about change it does things don't have to take 24 months to solve we can now solve it in you know 30 days or a week so what would it take for us to do that how could we make ourselves fit enough to do that and then flexible enough to manage through those changes and things like that? So it's, it, it can be during crisis, it can be doing normal operations and you define that idea of fast fit and, and flexible. Well, and I think part of it where Brian, you were talking about the, you know, everyone got this, there was, there was an organizational expectation set, right? that this this is who we are this is how we show up this is what's going on where covid when you talk about it people went in and they we just kind of learned as we went along right and and because there were so many unknowns leaders ha were more transparent they were more open to rapid change they were more open to experimenting because literally you're building the car as you're driving down the road for me, it's the, when you think about that is how do you set the expectation for the people in the organization, right? Because in order, and you know this because you're in change, in order for the organization to change, the individuals have to change. So what do we need to do to set that expectation for people so that they don't resist it, right? Because a lot of it is, you know, I'm going to come in and I've been doing the same job for 30 years. Of course, that's never been me, but I'm doing the same job for 30 years. And now, now you're telling me that I have to be open to things potentially rapidly changing and things, whatever. And I think a lot of people don't know how to go from this has been my job and the way I did it for 30 years to what does it look like to step into, and I love this, and I did hashtag the speed of now. You know, I mean, because now is about evolution and changing and experimenting and learning and, you know, putting stuff together and going, no, that didn't work like we thought. We're going to do this over here, right? How do you do that? How do you start doing that in an organization of how many people at Sutter Health? One individual at a time, right? Where do you start? Yeah, and when we talk about the speed of now, it's so when I think about the speed of now, which is why I like it so much, the speed of now is today. So we have never been at a pace like we are right now in November 2023. Mm -hmm. It's never been at the pace as, it, as it's been before for so many reasons, generative AI for one, so mm -hmm. much else going on, but also just um, how, uh, how sentiment swings worldwide can just change everything on a moment's notice and so much more. But there's the speed of now in terms of the speed of, of the way the world is working. There's also the speed of uh, now in of being in the moment. So one of the things that also comes to mind is I'm just thinking about what you asked is, um, this is not new, but it's something we should never forget is to be present. So mm -hmm. one way that an individual, how I, you, uh, one person at a time uh, can successfully navigate that is to be present mm -hmm. um, in the situation. Because it's remarkable what we can do when we have to, which is what both of you are saying mm -hmm. uh, through, through those big and small things. So mm -hmm. to be present um, and... Um, and to be in the situation and also as much as possible, if we can declutter and get rid mm. of the rest of the noise and the self-talk and the, 
uh, anything else that can get in the way of just facing what's right in front of me right now. Peel back all the layers. Okay, there's this. Now what? And mm -hmm. and then the slow. Now this sounds almost contradictory, but in that speed of now, also to slow it down in that moment to take myself through it. And so some of it is muscle memory, but some of it also is to just slow down that moment like athletes do where things start to slow down for them so they can react and respond and not overthink. So those are some attributes we don't always talk about with the usual change management 101, but those are mm -hmm. some things that come to mind for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you gonna say something, Roko? No, go ahead. I don't wanna jump on you. Um, the, the, it's it's interesting. I, I I agree with all the stuff that you're saying, right? Um, the the interesting thing for me, especially at the role that you have in the organization, right, is how do you start? Because you have a growth mindset. I mean, you're all about developing yourself continually. I mean, you can hear it. I want feedback. I'm ready for coaching. I'm coachable. You know, all that, right? It's growth mindset. Not everyone has that. Not everyone is in that space. You'd smile because you know it's true. Um, but but I wonder at, at the role that you're in in an organization, I think about it with, you know, the development that I do with leaders in other orgs and, and the same thing. How do you get people to dip their toe in the water so they understand? Because I think a lot of it, Brian, you've tested yourself. So you know what you're capable of. You know what's possible. Um, not everyone's in that same boat right? Especially the one that's been doing the same thing forever. What What is one thought you have about how to start with people that, that go, I can't even relate to that. I, I don't, I don't even know. Don't like, don't pick me. So I guess maybe it's an assumption that the person is going to face the situation and they are going to have to do something with it versus opting out of it. So under that assumption, mm -hmm. uh, some things that I think about that, that I would hope to uh, convey to others in, in the situation for themselves. Number one is to be honest, uh, be honest with yourself and be willing to accept how you're feeling and mm -hmm. what you're thinking and don't be in a rush to get out of it. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be anxious. It's okay to be angry. Um, just acknowledge it. Um, acknowledge that it doesn't excite you um, because if you brush it off, um, probably not a lot of good is gonna come from it or mm -hmm. it'll just take longer to get there and get out of it. So acknowledge the things that have to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. um, that's, um, that's number one. Some other things that come to mind, and I'm just riffing. I didn't obviously didn't come into this. You are fine. I'm sitting here thinking, yeah. no pressure, Brian. I just threw this heavy question. Yeah. To you. I didn't have any script. I didn't have any script. There's no gotchas. There's no gotchas. So yeah. the disclaimer so, is Brian is not prepped for this. We did not give him questions at the front end of it. Um, and so I appreciate the fact that you have a depth of knowledge and you can just speak. Yeah. So so part of it is just acknowledging what has to be acknowledged. Uh, another thing is if, if I have to go through something, what is my frame of reference? We almost mm -hmm. always have a frame of reference that we can look back on to move forward. Uh, another um, another thing is to think um, is to think about um, who can I look at to understand what what is connecting with them. What is where are they getting their, oh. their energy or their path? So uh, when we look at someone and then we can emulate that, not, mm -hmm. not so there might be 10 people all going through it. We're not going to be able to relate to everybody, but we can mm -hmm. probably relate to someone. We can relate to elements of uh, what, as we're observing others, if we can observe people who have gone through it even better, mm -hmm. even in the moment, uh, when you're, when I've been running my, uh, my 10 K's before, when I'm going at my 25 minute a mile pace, uh, I sometimes look at how someone else is running and what are they doing? And mm -hmm. then it kind of keeps me going too. And I, I can maybe yeah. do something a little bit differently. So you can learn in the moment and how to move forward from there. There's so much more, but those are the first few things that come to mind for me. Uh, you know, the whole time you were talking, I think he, he's talking about the coaching framework. <laughs> 
you know, because yes, yes, in, in, yes. in a coaching, in a coaching, uh, arrangement, you know, the, the client is acknowledging, Hey, I'm struggling with something and they're, they're trying to better understand what it is. So the first thing that you try and do is, well, let, let's try and acknowledge what it is. Is it fear? Is it anxiety? You know, what, what is it? that's underneath that water, that emotion that you're feeling. And then what are my current beliefs about it? And when, when you work through some of those things, then, then you move to, okay, well, what's, what's possible? How could I think differently about myself and the situation to move through this, this thing? And then it's, what are the resources that I have that are out there that can help me? Whether it's to your point, is there somebody that I can emulate or is there somebody in the past that I felt comfortable that I could pull them in and be my buddy during my, my transition period. And then, you know, like, what are the next steps that, you know, and you close it out like that. So it's like, I, I'm sorry. I was geeking out for a moment. Cause I was thinking, that, oh, in other words, I was rambling for 10 minutes and I could have just said, use the coaching framework. <laughs> but people may or may not understood what you were talking about if you said that. Right. The thing that I loved um, the, about all the stuff that you said, it, it is about mindset, but it's also about what can I learn from people that are doing it well? whatever that is, right? Because no matter what, you're going to have situations, whether it's productivity, whether you're going through change, whatever it may be, if you're not the one who's doing it well and successful, right, as you want to be or need to be, look around and then buddy up with those people that are seem to be clipping along at a pretty good pace and find out what's different. You know, is it their perspective? Do they have different knowledge than you do? Do you have assumptions going that they don't have, that they've blown those up already? Um, but I love the idea of realizing you're not on an island like Tom Hanks and the, you know, the FedEx guy. Um, you do have resources and you know, do have people around you. And odds are those people around you are probably going through what you're going through too, right? Yeah. So where's it working? And yeah. not only are you looking at those and who are doing it well, but also... If you see somebody step in a puddle, look at it and say, oh, don't step in that puddle. So you can also learn. <laughs> if somebody's in front of you, you can also learn, yeah. <laughs> learn and adapt for when you get there. Yeah, he fell off the cliff. I probably won't go that way. Yeah, yeah. no, I totally <laughs> agree with you. I, I love, and we could probably talk about this stuff for days, but then again, um, I, I enjoy these conversations and I enjoy picking your brain about your perspective and your experience on stuff. And so um, that being said, this has been awesome. So thank you. Um, as we wrap this up, Brian, and like I said, I appreciate your time. What are one or two things? And we added two because Roko couldn't stick to one. <laughs> she like had a few. One or two things that from our discussion that you think, you know, I want people to walk away with this. Yeah. And I don't want to repeat the same things, but we have talked about a few things. So um, I have I didn't come into this thinking I was going to use the term muscle memory so many times, but maybe that's one theme that is standing out that um, we were always building our muscle along the way and uh, keep building it, keep nurturing it so, uh, so that we do have it, but also count on it. We can mm -hmm. count on it because we have built it. So it helps us uh, to move forward, especially into a situation where we we can't always see exactly what we're going to get into, but we've been mm -hmm. preparing, preparing for that moment, whatever that moment is going to be. So whether it's talking about fast fit or flexible or being present or any of those things, it's maybe not so much, um, maybe being present doesn't tie to the muscle memory, but just, just um, we have a lot of frames of reference. And mm -hmm. so we're building our story and there's so much in the story that we can use in the next moment. So that's something that really stands out for me. Yeah, and I love that. The thing I'll add on with muscle memory, muscle memory, when we establish it, it takes less energy. So it's actually easy for us to navigate through and do those things because we're not consciously having to learn something new. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great call out. Thank you. Roko, what's on your mind? 
Oh my God. I just had it and it just went out my head, but I'll try and recover <laughs> it. Really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> seriously. Because there are so many things and I finally synthesized it down to one thing. And then I was like, oh man, when you said that, now it just went out the window. I'm so sorry. I'll try and not it, talk it, next time. No, it's okay. It's perfectly okay. It's it's more of my mind. I think it's, um, I think the one thing um, that I'm going to share now is um, it's this I idea of just say, okay, when things come your way, and I, I think you said it, um, Brian, earlier is, you know, change is a given, right? And you can choose to resist or, or, you know, just have this mindset of just saying, okay, take a deep breath and then think through, what am I going to do with it? Um, because in that moment, whether you use that fast fitter, flexible, or you just think about being nimble, um, it'll at least clear your mind. If you go to that resistance, then it, you know, tends to stop you in your tracks. And if you just say, okay, and take that deep breath and then take a step forward. And, and I just, I love that mindset. Yeah. Um, thank you. The thing, the thing I'm going to go back to for whatever reason, cause it's, it, it, it's so simple, the speed of now. This whole concept around the speed of now and go to your whole idea with asking questions and everything else. And my brain goes to if 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 we're going to adjust and adapt to the speed of now, we first have to understand what it is. Right. How do you how do you put yourself in that position to where you've got awareness at a different level than what you may have if you're just like trucking through your life? Um, and so I think that's some of the things too is, are you actually keeping pace? Am I keeping pace with the level of change and how things are going along? And how do I know? What am I looking at to know whether or not I'm tracking okay and that that what I'm doing and how I'm feeling and the job I'm doing, the experience and all that stuff is keeping pace with the speed of now. Uh, and I think there's power in that and understanding and not just sitting back, you know, going, okay, I've been doing this job for 30 years. Yes, but you haven't been doing it now. Mm -hmm. And now, like you said, is the moment. And so I think that's the thing that stood out for me is there's so much in that statement, that phrase. Um, so anyway, that's what stands out for me. Yeah, I'll just maybe have really, really fast as uh, Roka used the word, okay. It's like, okay. And then the next thing that came to mind for me is here we are. So yeah. we're talking about speed of now. Here we are. Here I am. I am here now. And we have an opportunity also to look at our surroundings, make sure we're looking at the surroundings, what's there, because what's there are the materials that help us get our feet under us and uh, to see how we navigate from there. So yeah. part of now is, is truly being in that now and, and um, being and acknowledging what is there to be able to move forward. Yeah. And and it's it's removing the blinders that because what happens is as humans a lot of times we see what we expect to see. So if we're going to be open and curious like you said and inquisitive, let's actually pull the blinders off and look around and go, okay, what is here? What is now, right? <laughs> um and I think that's when we're going to realize there's there's a whole world out there and the world is literally at our doorstep too. Um, that's, that's gone through some pretty rapid fire changes in a, like blink of an eye. Yeah. So um, thank you again for this time, Brian Stortz, um, the director of organizational effectiveness and change management, longest title that won't fit on a badge. Um, so appreciate being in the room with you and your perspective and your time. Roko, always you. Um, until next time, this is Leadership Soundbites. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you. Bye -bye. Mm -hmm.